I saw Rick laying on the ground. Everybody is basically looking at you to save the day and to be the, the measure of calm, and I was praying to God. It's just a regular Sunday morning on April 25th, feeling fine, nothing on my mind stress-wise. Just a normal day. I consider myself to be pretty healthy. My entire life healthy. I never even had a headache. Rick arrived at church and performed his regular Sunday duties, which included escorting the pastor into the auditorium. And I'm standing about 15 feet from him because he likes to go in and check the sound before he goes up front. And I remember feeling absolute, all of a sudden, absolutely terrible. Like I have never had that feeling before in my life. And I remember walking towards the back of the chair to hold on to it. And that's the last thing I remember. That morning felt different. Each service that day was spirit empowered. It was just like God saturated each service in a unique way. Worship was going on. It was the last song and I had my hands raised. Pastor Archie was quickly made aware that Rick had collapsed beside him. And I looked over and Rick was totally laid out, unresponsive. And so I ran out of the auditorium, called uh, Officer Ed. He came in working on him, no pulse no breathing, he was gone. I was maintaining a presence out front and the door opened up, the auditorium door towards the back and uh, Pastor Archie immediately said, I need help, we need 911. I checked Rick uh, for any signs of uh, breathing. I checked his airway, uh, placed my ear down by his mouth to feel if I could feel any breath. Checked his carotid artery for a pulse and also uh, on his wrist. And uh, I didn't get any. Uh, response of life from, from him at all. I was able to communicate with my dispatch and I called for a rescue unit to respond and I stated that I had an adult male that was unresponsive and not breathing. We do have a friendship. He's a retired police officer himself from New York. So we had a, a very good bond and a very strong rapport with each other to see somebody that you know you care about. Um, it really just hits home. You know, that this is the real deal. And he, yeah, he had no signs of life. He was gone. I decided to leave Rick in the hands of professionals and walk to the stage. I was thinking, man, what am I going to do? You know, what am I going to say? I had all those emotions. You know, I've known Rick for 12 years, and these people are friends. And the emotion of seeing my friend on the floor lifeless and having to do what I'm called to do and lead people in a way where it calms the atmosphere and not incites fear or anxiety in people. And I just had all these emotions going through me when I walked up on the stage, but, but God came through in a supernatural way. As the worship band continued to play, Pastor Archie asked the congregation to start praying for Rick. People really prayed. They believed God and they didn't know the extent of the situation or circumstance, but they knew something was really wrong. Everybody was praying. And uh, all of a sudden, Rick's eyes just started to open like out of a out of a sleep. They just rolled back in his head, and I was like, "Wow, what just happened?" It was just there's just no way to describe it. I mean, it, just to see that was just unreal. It was a complete miracle. I opened my eyes toward the end of that prayer, and I saw Rick stand up, a guy who was lifeless no pulse, not breathing. I just saw Rick stand up. <laughs> if anybody tells you the prayer doesn't work, you tell them that the devil's a liar. Prayers went up and I sat up. Rick was checked out by medics and in the days that followed by a team of specialists and doctors too, he was given the all clear and told he had the heart of a 20 year old. I have a new nickname now. My nickname is Lazaric. So <laughs> I don't know why God chose me. I mean, I'm, I'm humble and thankful that he chose to use me for his glory. He did that for me, of course, naturally. He brought me back. But he did that for people that were in church that day. Everybody that was in church that day who witnessed that have now become part of that miracle. I felt like the Holy Spirit just said, Rick is just a picture of the church. 
that God wants to awaken His church because a sleeping church cannot impact culture. I believe God's waking, waking up His church to help a world that's hurting. It strengthens my faith because there's days that you wake up and you're like, well, what's my purpose? You know, when something like that happens, it's, that's your purpose. That's your calling. That's where God puts you. I mean, I did nothing that day. I called for a rescue. <laughs> I'm glad I was here. I'm glad my friend is okay. It was all God. Mentally, I've changed. It just, it gave me a new lease on how I see things. We're here for a purpose. I believe God can do anything. All things are possible to them that believe. I just believe it encouraged people. It strengthened people's faith in what God could do. And I just believe the church needs to be a place where anything can happen. It just reinforced the idea that God is big and that he's supernatural and God's bigger than any box or any limitation that I can place on him. That he wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think or imagine according to the power that works within us. If he can use me and the person that I am with all the faults that I have, then he can use anybody. He can use you. You can be used. And if he uses you, it will never be for bad. It will always be for good. Incredible. Well, joining us live in studio now is the lead pastor of Bridge Church in Virginia Beach, Archie Callahan. Archie, thanks for being with us. Welcome it's great to be in here. Yeah. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Now, it's something really fascinating about this story. You talked about how that testimony is really the picture of a sleeping church. Talk a little more about that. I just believe today in our culture, we need a church that is alive. Hmm. And overall, it seems like the church has become very complacent. You know, I remember a, a story in, in Revelation chapter 3 where Christ is speaking to the Laodicean church. It's a church that is uh, lukewarm. Yep. And I believe oftentimes we become lukewarm and God wants to put us on fire. You know, we're in the Christmas season. It's a mm -hmm. season of miracles. Yeah. Mary experienced miracles. Mm -hmm. She said, for nothing is impossible with God. Mm -hmm. But she had to agree with the purpose of God. She said, be it unto me according to your word. God needs us yeah. for divine execution of his will in the earth. Yeah, you know? definitely. Well, what scripture has the Lord revealed to you, especially after witnessing a miracle like that in your church? Nothing is impossible to them that believe, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, that's good. Ephesians 3.20 says this, Now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly yeah. above all that we could ask or think mm -hmm. according to the power that works within us. Yeah. If there's nothing working in us, nothing will be working through us. Mm. There has to be some inward activity yeah. for God to get glory. Yeah. It's all about the glory of God. Amen. So people are hurting. Christians yes. are hurting. The world is hurting. So mm -hmm. what do you think the church should be doing? You said we're kind of sleeping. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. I, I agree yeah. with you. So mm -hmm. is it about activity? Is it about doing more? What, what would you say to churches, to people in churches? I don't think it's about doing more. I think mm -hmm. it's about being more. <laughs> doing flows out of being. Okay. Mm -hmm. We were called to be a witness. The Holy Spirit was sent to us in Acts, Acts 1-8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be. Mm -hmm. Didn't say you will do said, you will be my witnesses. I think the church needs to be the witness in the world hmm. yeah. to the hurting, to mm -hmm. the depressed, to the sick, to the lame. And for us to do that, we just create an atmosphere where God is welcome, with the, where the Holy Spirit is welcome, where he can move in the lives of people. I don't think people are looking for better programs. <laughs> they can go to the movies. Mm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they're looking for presence. Yeah. The presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. This gospel is good news for all people. Yeah. And it brings joy. Definitely. Well, what are some of the challenges that you see churches are facing today? And how can churches overcome those challenges? A lot of the challenges, it could be just dealing with people. Mm -hmm. See, Back when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, when people came to church, their families were most of all intact. Yeah. Everybody that walks through the door of your church today, they're experiencing some type of brokenness. Yeah, uh, Their families are in disarray, mental illness, 
uh, depression, anxiety disorder. But I found God to be attracted to our brokenness. Mm. Psalm 34 says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And and so I believe God comes near in our brokenness. And what better season to recognize uh, that God came near than Christmas. He came, he condescended, he came to where we were at. And so I believe the church has to go where people are at. We need to speak the gospel, preach the gospel on a level that they understand. Well, Andrew, if I may, like you, you had talked about, you just mentioned people don't need more programs. They need more presence. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to individuals watching, maybe pastors and other church members who are watching, like they want to usher in more of the presence of God. How can they do that? Walking in a sensitivity with the spirit. Mm. Walk in the spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Understanding that we, when we go into church, we have a system, we have a program, but that needs to submit itself to the moving of the Holy Spirit. We mm. have to make room in our worship services mm. for God. We make yeah. room for people. We make room for songs. <laughs> we make room for musicians, ushers, greeters. Yeah. But do we make room for God to That's move? Good. Yeah. And just being very sensitive during worship. Which way does God want to take this service? Because it's all about God. It's all about yeah. His glory. Mm-hmm. Uh, the church is the very presence of God in the earth. And if mm-hmm. God's not present, you don't have a church. Yeah, You have a club or yeah. click, mm-hmm. but you don't have a church. Which that day, you were you were sensitive mm-hmm. to, yeah. the, mm-hmm. to the Holy Spirit. I mean, in a, a miracle happens like that or a situation happens like that. You have to be flexible. And that's exactly what you were. Yeah. And I just went with it. You know, Mm. I I knew the ambulance was coming. Yeah. Fire department, there was going to be some distraction. Mm. So I wanted to center the people in on God and not what was going on around them. And they just, it was just a supernatural thing. I can't explain Mm. it, but God showed up. So how did this affect you personally afterward in the weeks and months that followed? that it, it affected me in, in believing that God can do anything. Mm-hmm. I, I think I knew it up here, but it probably dropped 18 <laughs> inches into my heart. Yeah. And I yeah. know it, man, God can do wow. anything. And I'm going to believe God for anything. People to be healed, delivered, set free. God can do anything. That's how it changed me. Yeah. And you've known Rick 12 years. Mm-hmm. So have you considered why God either chose him or how God would use him for this? I don't think God caused Rick to die, Mm -hmm. but God used Rick falling out and dying for his glory, Mm -hmm. you know, and and, uh, Rick was just the person Mm -hmm. and who needed the miracle. And God chose to use Rick that day and God did it for his glory. It's all for the glory of God. Yeah, definitely. Well, what word of encouragement would you give people who are watching this interview, who just saw the amazing miracle of Rick literally coming back to life? What word of encouragement would you give them today? Don't ever give up. Mm. God is a God of miracles. Whatever miracle, big or small, God is able to perform miracles, especially during this Christmas season. Yeah. God wants to do miracles supernaturally. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times during this season, Andrew, I don't know if you feel this, but I feel like the enemy comes full force. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think of that scripture where the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord lifts up a standard against him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess what word of encouragement would you give people who are seeing so many bad things and are kind of getting discouraged, you know, when in reality it's like, we need to be celebrating miracles. Yeah, yeah. I believe oftentimes we give the enemy too much uh, credit, mm. you know, because mm. he has actually been defeated. Amen. First John 3 says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of the enemy. Yeah. Sometimes the greatest enemy is enemy. It's my own doubt and unbelief. Yeah. And sometimes we spend our lives trying to destroy the enemy externally when oftentimes the internal enemies try to Mm. rob us of our joy. Joy is a choice. Peace is a choice. Actually, can I I ask Archie, what do you think, what do you think, uh, broad question, I guess, but what do Christians, what are we most guilty of that turns off the world, that we make the gospel unappealing in a sense? Is there something we do in our walk that is not helpful to the gospel? Mm. Uh, I think when we try to blend in with culture, it turns people off. Mm. Yeah. I think the church is meant to stand out, to be a city on a hill, a light, the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. And I believe oftentimes we try to blend in so much with the world, Mm -hmm. it's not an alternative. It's not a light. 
It's not appealing. It's no difference. Wow. No difference. And we don't preach the gospel. The gospel is not bad news. Mm -hmm. We have no bad news for people. We have good news <laughs> that your sins have been forgiven. All you have to do is receive the forgiveness of sin. That's You've good. been reconciled to God. All men are reconciled to God already. You just have to receive the free gift of salvation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pastor, Pastor, you're preaching. Yeah. <laughs> you do this for a living? No. Yeah, a little bit. We appreciate you being with us very much. Amazing awesome. story. So and thank you. Uh, thank you for your insights. Thank yeah. you.